Good morning and uh, welcome back, everyone. I hope you've all had your coffee, because we're going to enter the uh, world of coffee now. Uh, let me start by giving you a snapshot of our coffee business. Uh, we're a business of over 22 billion Swiss francs, uh, highly accretive from a margin point of view to the group. So our role within the business is very clear. Our, our role is to drive accretive growth over the medium and long term. To do that, as you see, we have very broad geographic scope. We're present and leading in every one of our zones. And we also have a, a very well balanced product portfolio with particular strengths in the high growth and high margin uh, categories within coffee of portion coffee and soluble coffee. Let's have a look at the coffee market in total. Uh, the total coffee market is worth roughly 400 billion Swiss francs. And of that, uh, one quarter splits in home, about 100 billion, and three quarters of the value sits out of home in cafes, workplaces, uh, and bakeries. When you look at the cup consumption, though, the, the picture is exactly reversed. 75% of all of the cups that are consumed are consumed in home, with roughly 25% of the cups consumed out of home. And that gives you a good sense of the very different value that a cup of coffee in a Starbucks has versus a cup of Nescafe in home. Now, pre-pandemic, the category was growing at a reliable 5% compound annual growth rate every year. And during the pandemic, we saw some shifts in consumption, which are obvious and you know well. Uh, In-home consumption saw a massive increase, strong double-digit growth in in-home coffee consumption, as out-of-home coffee consumption, particularly in offices and cafes, took a major hit. But already in 22, as we see the categories begin to rebalance, we're very confident that the outlook for this category is going to be at and around that 5% compound annual growth rate going forward. So what's driving that growth going forward? Uh, Bernard gave us the, the macro trends within the industry, and you'll have heard there was uh, often around uh, how consumers are adapting and changing their habits, particularly uh, post-COVID. For us in coffee, though, there are three very clear drivers of... Have I moved on? Yeah, here we are. Uh, so there are three very clear drivers of growth for us going forward. The first is the coffee shop at home experience that consumers are increasingly looking for. You know, so many consumers are coming into coffee and being educated coffee through, the, through their experiences in coffee shops. And that has really risen the bar and expectations of what consumers are looking for. Uh, looking to experience. So where the coffee comes from, the terroir, the, uh, the, the area of the world that the coffee is developed in is becoming increasingly important. Connoisseurship, what sort of coffee is it? How's it brewed? How's it roasted? Very important. And then different types of coffee consumption. Many people drinking not just a cup of black coffee in the morning, but some cold coffee or flavored coffees at different times during the day. All of that increased expertise and expectation from consumers rises, it raises the premium offerings and the consumption occasions available for coffee. The second one is out of home. Now, the out of home business took a big hit during COVID, but in home, obviously, we saw some very big consumption occasions. Now, coming back out of pandemic, we see two particular things happening. One is, as out of home recovers, particularly in developed markets, and let's take offices as an example, to get people back into offices, many employers are offering an upgraded coffee experience and want to bring big brands with coffee corners into their office to encourage uh, their employees back in. That's giving us huge opportunities in brands like Nespresso and Starbucks to capture that occasion. Also in developed markets, the notion of hybrid working. So while people are returning to work, even if you're spending one or two days extra at home, those are extra in-home occasions for consumption that didn't exist pre-pandemic. So as this settles down, 
premiumisation in our reform and also increased consumption, albeit maybe one or two days extra uh, a week, all add up to a very buoyant volume proposition. The last one, and this is the big driver for me as I think about the business over the next five to ten years, is roughly half of the world today still drinks no coffee or very little coffee. Roughly three billion consumers for whom coffee is not a natural part of their daily beverage drinking. China, India, large parts of Africa, all of these markets have huge potential as we introduce coffee as a category into those markets to have increased consumption. It's also a very, very uh, resilient category. And you see this chart, this is from tw 2000 to today and then projecting forward. You know, this is a category that can weather turbulent times. Frankly, people love coffee. They need coffee, it's a ritual and it's an affordable pleasure in most consumers' days. And it's not something that they're going to give up even in tough times. So let's have a look at our business in a little bit more detail. We are clear market leader in coffee globally, with a global share of 22% of CPG. That's almost three times bigger than our next biggest competitor, JDE. We have leading positions in every zone within which uh, we play. So all five zones, we have a leading position. I may be calling out the US in particular. Uh, in 2018, we were a distant number four in the US. We now, with our Starbucks partnership and license, are a clear number one. So we've really completed in the last four years our geographical footprint to have a strong presence in every one of our markets. We've also been growing share consistently over the last three and a half years. So strong share performance across all of our different brands and across all of our different regions. Put simply, it, one in every five cups of coffee that are drunk globally today are going to be an, an Nestle coffee, which is uh, an impressive but also daunting statistic because it gives you a sense of the responsibility we take for continuing to delight consumers and build out this category. And to do that, we have these three iconic brands, the, th the world's three biggest and best loved coffee brands. Nescafe, the world's favorite coffee. One in seven cups of coffee drunk globally is going to be a Nescafe. It's approachable, it's versatile, it's universal, and it spans all sorts of price points and all sorts of consumer experiences from a two to three cents single stick pack all the way up to our Nescafe Dolce Gusto machine that you've seen already highlighted. Nespresso, the leading premium coffee brand in the world, delivering superior taste in a highly sustainable way with sophistication and precision. And that brand continues to grow and roll out across the world. And then the last member of the family, Starbucks, we only uh, had Starbucks uh, for four years, four years worth of our Starbucks relationship, has really rounded out our portfolio. Starbucks is the definitive coffee shop experience brand, and it's defined coffee for a whole generation of the world's global consumers. And with these brands, we have a unique ability to play and capture value at every single price point. As I said, you can buy a single stick of Nescafe between two and four cents a cup in Lagos, uh, in Nigeria, and all the way at the top of the profile, we have a blue bottle cup of cappuccino, which is going to set you back $5. So at every price point in the coffee chain, we have a brand and an offering that can delight consumers and customers. We also though, have a, a very a unique ability with our different distribution models to capture value and segment the market in different ways. You know, Nespresso is direct to consumer. A large business that doesn't play in retail. Nescafe is almost 
exclusively retail. So as we split our different brands up across geographies, categories, and distribution channels, we have a unique ability to compete and win. Now, when we last met, which was uh, 2019, I outlined our global business strategy. That's the strategy that uh, really guides everything that we do on coffee, and it served us very well over the last uh, four years. Four very simple pillars of growth, and then two key enablers that we take across all of our businesses. So the first is we continue, and Stefan showed you great examples of this, to work to innovate and renovate our core brands on our core product formats. That's 80% of our business, and it's where 80% of our growth is going to continue to come from, from continuing to reinvent and innovate on the core. We're also, though, going to continue to drive <coughs> innovation within this category. You know, it was Nestle that invented soluble coffee in 1938 with the creation of the Nescafe brand. We created the portion coffee segment with Nespresso in the 70s into the early 80s. And as you've seen, and as you will see, we are committed to continuing to bring breakthrough category-defining innovation into coffee to build out the value proposition. The third area is accelerating our cold coffee offering. Now, you know, most uh, of the coffee that's consumed in a Starbucks today, over 50%, is a cold beverage. When you go to China, one of the biggest emerging markets for Starbucks, you find it's up to 70 or 80%. Simply, there's a whole generation of young people entering this category through cold, and many of them will consume cold all of their coffee drinking days. So capturing that cold opportunity being relevant there is a big growth driver for us going forward. And then the last area of growth is driving our out-of-home business. I'll explain later how we do that, but uh, it's a massive area of existing business, as you know, 75% of the value of the category is there. We only have a 15% share of that business today. 15% of our business is in out-of-home. So we have huge potential to drive that and add value in that area as we go forward. And then underpinning those four growth strategies are two enablers, leading in sustainability, I'll take you through that, and then unleashing the power of digital across our entire portfolio. So let me spend a minute on Nescafe, as I said, the world's favorite brand. It's in 170 countries. Uh, we serve over 6,000 cups every second of Nescafe. Uh, and one in every seven cups of coffee drunk is a Nescafe. So truly the world's favorite brand. You see also in this chart that the stat I gave you about how, uh, how little coffee is consumed in the uh, markets of China, India, and Africa. Roughly seven, uh, 32 cups per annum drunk of coffee against a global average of over 200 cups per annum. So huge growth potential in all of these markets. And to unleash that, our, our Nescafe strategy is very clear. We're going to premiumize this brand and continue to delight consumers and customers on Nescafe where it's already strong and developed. I've got a couple of examples and you may have had a chance to taste them at the break. If not, please do. We have our Nescafe Roastery, which is a, the premium expression of soluble coffee in Nescafe rolled out first in the UK and now all over Europe over the last 18 months and doing extremely well. Premium offering on Nescafe with a great taste based on that roastery connoisseurship. At Black Roast, that's a coffee which you may need tomorrow morning. It's a coffee with a very strong kick and ideal for getting you started in the morning. Against a big consumer insight of people for their morning cup really wanting that uncompromising, strong, bold taste. And then the last one I, I have in this chart is one that uh, Stefan also mentioned, which is a great example of how we're introducing the world to coffee through locally relevant tastes, locally produced. These products are, are manufactured with coffee and malt from the region and allowing consumers in those markets to get a taste they love at a price they can afford and introducing the Nescafe brand to them. 
Let me move now on to uh, Nespresso. Now, Nespresso is a brand that was born direct to consumer from its very earliest days. This was a brand that had a direct relationship with the consumer. And it's now fully digitally, digitally enabled from bean to cup. We've got three big drivers on the Nespresso uh, business. The first is the rollout and the fast expansion of our virtual system. I hope again you had a chance to see it in the break. Uh, this is a, a, a part of the business that's going incredibly quickly as we put real focus on building out the in-home penetration of the virtual system. Almost half of all of our new consumers to Nespresso are entering the brand through virtual. And you probably saw on the stand, we now have Virtual Pop, which is our most affordable, most accessible virtual machine. It retails at or less than 100 Swiss francs or US dollars. And that's really opening up whole new avenues of in-home penetration to consumers. And it's a very special coffee because it's not, it's not a different size of capsule, it's an entirely new way of enjoying Nespresso coffee. Because of that centrifugal uh, design, the coffee that comes out is smoother, richer and creamier with that unique crema. And because the capsule is recognised by the machine, you get uh, real customised coffee from that machine. It reads the capsule and knows exactly how long to brew for, how hot the water should be and also how long it's going to take to extract. So, very versatile system, and it's a big area of growth for us. We're now in well over 50 markets and expanding fast. The next area for Nespresso is driving in-cup preference through really sourcing and giving consumers the rarest coffees imaginable. And you'll have seen a reviving origins work over the last five or six years. We go to places that used to produce coffee, and for drought or famine or war, have been unable to, to produce coffee. And we go into those areas, work with farmers, and basically resurrect coffee growing areas. That makes the coffee very rare. It makes the coffee expensive. And because of our value chain and knowing exactly who those farmers are, there's a benefit for those farming communities and families because they get a market for their coffee. And the lights are Nespresso consumers by giving them the rarest least accessible coffee in one go. So it's a real value creation in every sense of the word story for Nespresso. And then the last thing you'll see, and you'll have examples of this uh, tomorrow when we're together uh, in our digital hub, is how we're really expanding our ecosystem in Nespresso to get the most value out of all of this data that we have, constantly innovating with AI uh, to know our consumers better, anticipate our consumers better, and offer them what they, uh, what they need and what they want, even before they've told us. A few minutes on Starbucks. Starbucks, when we last talked, was very new to us, and I can hardly believe myself it's only four years since we signed the deal with Starbucks. And uh, this is much more than a deal. What we've done is forged a very deep uh, and vibrant partnership with Starbucks as we have rolled out all of our in-home propositions for them. Uh, we govern this relationship against the Global Coffee Alliance. That's what Starbucks and ourselves have forged. And that is a relationship from the very top of our house all the way down to our salespeople that values the brand and values the relationship immensely. And we have done some very good business on the back of forging that relationship. We've almost doubled the size of the business that we bought in the 2018. We've added one and a half billion Swiss francs worth of incremental business. We've gone from launching 24 SKUs in March of 2019 to having 190 SKUs available in over 80 countries around the world. And in terms of consumers that we've touched with our in-home offering, we've connected 40 or created 14 billion individual purchase occasions for our products over the last four years. 14 billion individual purchases of our Starbucks products at home. And we continue to co-create and drive this relationship strongly for the future. 
So what's the next wave of growth? Look, we're going to continue to fuel innovation on this brand and attract new consumers at different times. I think you've seen on the stand, you certainly get to take home with you some of our seasonal offerings on Starbucks. The idea of doing these seasonally appropriate ranges in and outs that create huge buzz and excitement and tie very much into the Starbucks culture are a great way to introduce consumers to the brand, get them in, and then hook them to the experience. But we also have lots of strong innovation across different formats. And maybe the, uh, the, the one I would call out is what we're doing uh, on our soluble coffee business and our mixes business, where we're introducing real super premium experiences in those areas. The next is expanding out of home. I mentioned this as the out of home business uh, transforms itself. As people are looking for more and more added value coffee experiences in work and on the go, the ability of our Starbucks business to really compete there is strong, and you see strong plans on that going forward. And then the last area we're working with Starbucks on is building out our ecosystem, making sure that where we have data and we know where our Starbucks consumers are, we work together to enhance the consumer experience and drive the value of the brand through those links. Unique innovation. Stefan talked quite a lot about this, so I will not spend too much time on it. Um, we're very proud of the work of our R&D and commercial teams as we pulled together some real breakthrough innovation on our core businesses. On Nespresso, the launch of uh, paper uh, capsules to sit alongside our aluminium capsules is super important. It's something that consumers have been asking for, and we're delighted we'll be able to start rolling that out in France and Switzerland as of quarter one. We're also delighted to be rolling out our Nescafe Dolce Gusto brand new system, Neo, which is premiering as we speak in Brazil. It's on sale now. And, and that is the next generation of Nescafe Dolce Gusto machines. It's a connected, sustainable coffee machine where the capsule and the machine talk to each other to get great cups of coffee. And it's a highly sustainable offering because of its paper-based packaging. The last one on the slide, and we'll see this tomorrow, those who are with us, is Rustalier, which is a brand new coffee system that is at the very top end of our out-of-home offering. And that offers cafes and small bakeries, independents, the ability to get their own bespoke roasted coffee available for their consumers. So it makes available that a uh, roastery experience for even the smallest of retailers. It's rolling out fast. It's a super uh, connected machine, so it allows uh, us to track that machine's performance, which allows the, the cafe to get the very best service from us, and you'll see that in operation uh, tomorrow. Next strategy is uh, ready to drink. Uh, I said ready to drink or cold coffee is a huge growth platform. Uh, you may not know, we are number one in ready-to-drink coffee in China with the Smooth Latte brand. We have over 50% of the market in China. So big emerging market, growing fast, and we're number one. We're also number one in a number of ASEAN markets. So building out where we're strong is an important part of the strategy. But last year, we also forged an additional relationship with Starbucks as part of the uh, Global Coffee Alliance on taking their ready-to-drink coffee to market in ASEAN markets, Oceania, and in Latin America. And we're rolling out again over the last quarter of this year, so it's live in market uh, in Australia and in many ASEAN markets, the first of our ready-to-drink offers on that platform. Big growth engine for us going forward. And then the last one on the slide is not just ready-to-drink. Cold coffee is not just ready-to-drink. It's the ability to get a great cup of cold coffee prepared in home. And again, I hope you had the chance to see we have across all of our brands and all of our formats products that are specifically designed to be consumed cold in home and prepared cold in home, which would give that out-of-home coffee experience that people love in their own homes. Let me move to the last growth driver, which <coughs> is our... Uh, re uh, our out-of-home portfolio. And this chart really just shows the journey we've been on over the last five years. If I had shown you this chart five years ago, 
On the left, you would have seen we had lots of fairly basic coffee offers, basic coffee machines selling mainly soluble or instant coffee, and then large tins of Nescafe and small sticks of Nescafe. Over the last five years, we have transformed our ability to play with the brands across all price points and all service solutions. And that has been largely enabled by the uh, machines that we have available, brand new machines that sit in all locations offering great coffee, great value and great service for our out of home operators. So let me finally just switch gear and talk about sustainability. You got, oh, on sustainability, uh, one of our core drivers, you heard from Stefan a lot of the agri-science that's going into developing this category for us. But to put it in perspective for you, there are about 125 million people around the world who rely on coffee for their income. And in the coffee belt, in the equatorial coffee belt, we've got millions of farmers who rely exclusively on coffee for their income. And with climate change and ri rising temperatures, 50% of those farmers' incomes are in real peril if we don't tackle climate change because in 30 years, coffee will not be produced in those areas. So for us, sustainability isn't a nice to have, it's an absolute imperative. And as leaders in the industry, we take that responsibility seriously and we're driving real change with real commitments to make a difference to coffee over the medium and long term. That's why you see we've got impactful commitments that we're going to deliver around regenerative agriculture and CO2 reduction on green coffee. And in addition to the plant science and all of the work that we do to develop the future, we've got feet on the ground, over 700 agronomists working with farmers every single day to make a difference in their skills and their life chances. Let me finish by giving you an insight in what we're going to see to, uh, tomorrow when we're together. The first is you're going to see a whole range of connected machines that we have from our uh, Memento machine, which is the out of home Nespresso machine, Nescafe Dolce Gusto and Rustali. So you're going to get a chance to see those in action and actually see how they work and the difference that they make. You're going to have a deep dive into some of the groundbreaking work that we do on Nespresso uh, and meet our CEO, Guillaume Leconf, who's going to take you through a really inspiring case study of how we add value from bean all the way through to cup for every single person in the supply chain. And that could only be possible because of our digital uh, activation. And then the last section you'll see tomorrow is a deep dive into each of our brands and how they are using AI and predictive analytics to get innovation faster and more cost effectively to consumers. So with that, let me just give you some key takeaways from uh, the presentation that you've seen. First of all, we are leading and proud to lead in the world of coffee with our three iconic global coffee brands. Our objective is to outperform a category and a category we see growing at about 5% over the medium to long term. We're going to build those growth against our three key brands with each brand playing its own and unique part in the value chain. And rest assured, we will continue to move at speed to capture all of the growth that we see available. And we'll be using our digital capabilities to really underpin that growth.